Hello everybody, this is another GDAL tutorial. If you've been following my last videos, you know I've been talking a lot about how to use GDAL from the command line, but you can also process geospatial data using GDAL in Python, so that is what this video is about. The most common thing you would probably want to do is to import a raster file to GDAL as an array, manipulate it somehow, and then again write it to a GeoTIFF file. So let's find out how to do exactly that. I've already loaded the three libraries that we're going to work with today. First of all, GDAL up here, so make sure that GDAL is running on your machine. If you haven't installed it, I recommend my introduction and installation video for GDAL. Secondly, we need NumPy to manipulate the array we've created from our raster dataset, and then matplotlib to visualize our data. Okay, let's get started and define a first variable, call that ds for a dataset, and now we're going to open a raster dataset, and we do so using the function gdal open. And now the input is the name of our raster file. In this case, I've prepared a small snippet of a digital elevation model, which is called dem.tiff. Okay, let's run this. Okay, and now you can see we have a new variable called the s, and this is of type gdal dataset. This is not really a useful format to work with the data yet, but don't worry, we will convert our dataset to an array later. But what we can do by just opening our raster file is to get a bit of information about it, which we will also need to write a GeoTIFF file later on. The first thing that we can get from this GDAL dataset is the GeoTransform, which stores information on the origin of our raster file and also its resolution in x and y direction. So let's again define a new variable, GeoTransform, and this we can get from our dataset. So dataset get GeoTransform. Okay, now our GeoTransform looks like this. It is a tuple, and this first value here is the x coordinate of our top left corner. This next one is the horizontal pixel resolution, so from west to east. Then we have a zero in here. I actually don't know what this stands for. Next one is the y coordinate of our upper left corner, zero again, and then the vertical pixel resolution from north to south. And be aware that this is usually negative. Okay, so we now know the resolution of our digital elevation model, but what about its projection? Well, we can find that out as well. I will call that projection. And to get the projection, we again need our dataset, and then we call the function get projection. And now we have a new variable that stores the projected coordinate system of our dataset, and this is the UTM zone 19S in this case. All right, let's try to access the information that is stored within our raster set, so the individual pixel values, which would indicate the height of our digital elevation model in this case. And these elevation data are stored within a band of our data set, so we have to access that band in order to access the data. So let's call that band. And from our data set, we want to get a raster band. And in this case, we only have one band, so we want the first one. We can always check the number of raster bands that are stored within our data set by typing data set and raster count. And you can see this is one. However, if you have a multi-band data set, you could get the first band like this. For the second band, you would put a two right here and so on. By the way, if you want to find out more about all the functions that are available for an object of type dataset, for example, you can always go to the GDAL webpage and then Python right here. And then in the list of all classes here, you would find dataset. And if we scroll down here, you have a list of all the functions available, for example, getGeoTransform. All right, back to Python. If we now run our code, you see we now have a new variable called band of type GDAL band. And from that band, we can extract the data stored within our raster dataset by reading this band object to an array. So array is equal to band, and we're going to read that as an array. Okay. All right, now we have imported our raster dataset as an array that stores all the elevation values of our digital elevation model. We can make sure that everything has gone smoothly by looking at the results create a new figure and use pltm show to plot our array. Perfect. Now here is our digital elevation model loaded into Python as an array. I'm going to close that. Let's try to use Python to change the array that we've just loaded so that we don't just export an exact copy of our input DEM. Let's, for example, filter all pixels that store heights above a certain elevation threshold. 
and we will create a binary mass, so all pixels above a threshold will be assigned the value 1 and everything that is below the value 0. So let's call a new variable, bin mask, and now we will use numpy where to select all values within our array that are above a certain threshold. So we want all the values in our array that are greater or equal to, let's take the mean of all elevation values. So numpy mean array. Okay, and everything that is greater or equal to the mean will be assigned the value one and else we will set it to zero. Okay, here we've created our binary mask. Let's have a short look at that. Now this is what our binary mask looks like and as a final step let's try to export that to a GeoTIFF file. Now in order to write a raster file in Python using GDAL we do need the raster driver. You might remember all of those from previous tutorials. I want to write a GeoTIFF file so I do need the GeoTIFF raster driver and I will get that driver with the function GDAL get driver by name and the format that we want is GeoTIFF. Okay, let's register this driver. And now we can use it to create a new GDAL dataset in which we will store our newly created bin mask array. So let's call that new dataset outDS and we will use our driver to create a new dataset. Let's call that bin mask.tiff. And now we need to provide a couple of additional parameters. First of all, the size and x and y direction of our output raster. And we can get those two values by looking at the shape of our bin mask array. So bin mask shape. And you can see our array has 517 rows and 515 columns. So let's put that in here. So the x size is going to be bin mask shape. And we need the number of columns, so the second value right here. And then y size is going to be the first one. So bin mask shape zero. Okay, we also need to define the number of bands, which is again going to be one in our example here. So bands is equal to one. Again, if you would create a multi-band raster, you would put a higher number here and then subsequently write an array to each of those bands. Okay, but final thing we need to do in order to create this dataset is to define the format in which we want to store the data, so something like integer or float. In this case, we only have the values 1 and 0, so integer is going to be fine. And to set this type, we need a variable of the GDAL const module, which is called like this, GDAL GDT int, let's take this first one. If you're curious about all the types and variables that exist, you can look them up right here. And we are good to go to create a new dataset like this. Now we have a new GDAL dataset, but this is not complete yet. Like our dataset up here, this output dataset needs a geotransform, which we can assign to our output dataset using the function set geotransform. And then, because we haven't really changed the resolution or anything about our raster, we can simply take the geotransform from our input DM, so put GT right here, and we can do the same thing, of course, with the projection. So out ds set projection to this variable up here. Okay, now to actually put our array into this dataset we've just created, we will again need to open a raster band and then write our bin mask array to that band. So we already know how to get a raster band. So I'll define a new variable. Out band is equal to out dataset get raster band. And again, we want the first one. And now that we have that, we will not use the function read as array because we haven't really stored any data in there yet, but we will type outband and then use write array. And the input is of course bin mask. Let's quickly set a no data value. So outband set no data value to let's take numpy nan. And then to finally write all those changes that are stored in the cache right now to our disk, we need to call outband flush cache. 
Okay, let's run all of this. And if we quickly list all the files in my working directory, you can now see we have created a new GeoTIFF file called binmask.tiff. Now we are almost done, but there is still one thing that is really, really, really important. And this has gotten me a couple of times because I keep forgetting it from time to time. You do have to close your dataset and band in order for the changes that you made to be properly written to your disk. I will quickly show you the difference that this makes. So I've run this already, the binmask tiff file is there, and now I will try to open that with QJS. Now you can see I've loaded this file, but our beautiful binmask array that we've just created is not there. However, if I now go back to Python and set our outband to none and our output dataset as well, and run this again, the array now finally got properly written to the raster file that we've created. Okay, so be aware of that behavior and if you still have any questions, put them in the comments because this is the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.